Welcome, friends. We are unboxing Mansions of Madness, second edition expansion, Horrific Journeys. This is a slow unboxing video with lots of commentary and uh, annotations from yours truly. That's Michael Eldridge here. So if you're expecting a fast, plain Jane, vanilla unboxing video, go to a different one. There are other ones out there that are great, I'm sure, but we are going to take our time with this one. So let's start by looking at, let's start by looking more closely at the wonderful art. There's always beautiful art in this game. And we have the, the Zeppelin or Blimp in the background. We have the train here. We've got a building either being destroyed or it's derelict and falling apart or under construction. I'm not sure. And we have these awesome birds here. They look like ravens or some other form of crow. Either way, it's fantastic. And we still are, of course, listening that we are in the Arkham Horror Files, because as we know, Mansions of Madness, like Eldritch Horror, or Arkham Horror, second or third edition, or first for that matter, or Elder Sign, or Arkham Horror Living Card Game, or any of these related materials, they're not just in the Cthulhu uh, mythos and Lovecraftian universe. They are in the subcategory of the Arkham Universe, which has more license with adding a little bit of action and adventure to what is otherwise a hopeless nihilistic endeavor. There is a little bit more chance of fighting back in this take on the universe. And I like that. That works better for a game. So let's look at the back here. Well, uh, before even then, let's take a look at the art. Uh, and the, the board, rather, with these pieces. Whatever this huge thing is, it obviously just pops out as being like, what the heck is that? I love it. Curious about that. The miniatures in this game get a lot of garbage from people as being lower quality, and they certainly are lower quality than anything from Cool Mini or not, um, like Blood Rage, and they're certainly lower quality than uh, more recent Fantasy Flight games, like Doom, for example. But for 2010, I still think they're pretty darn good and still fantasy flight games one of their only arkham or cthulhu lovecraftian games that has miniatures at all so i don't mind i like them here we read the back horrific journeys expansion all aboard in the skies above the atlantic a dirigible's peaceful journey is interrupted by a bloody act of revenge and oncoming storm on the sea far below a treacherous saboteur plants the explosives that will sink a ship. In the New England countryside, a train billows black smoke, desperately fleeing an unimaginable threat. The Horrific Journeys expansion introduces three new scenarios that take investigators far from Arkham, solve perilous mysteries aboard a bustling transatlantic airship, a luxury ocean liner, or a scenic countryside train. By the way, the airship, I think, is what the dirigible... Is. I think it's a type of self, uh, self-propelled plane. Is it a Zeppelin? I'm not sure. Investigators must contend with hideous amphibian creatures rising out of the ocean's depths, interdimensional creatures tearing holes in the fabric of reality, and the ever-present danger that one wrong move could destroy the very vessels they are trying to protect. It will take everything from dangerous arcane rituals down to the very suitcases they carry to defeat these new threats. In order to arrive at their destinations, investigators must first survive the journey, and of course requires Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition to play. So, now we're opening it up. And we can see what looks to me like a minigun on the back, which is awesome, I think. Lovely. The much talked about key forge on here. Let's see the kinds of things that they're putting in here. We got some X Wing Star Wars stuff, some Star Wars Legion stuff, Legend of the Five Rings gets good reviews, Cosmic Encounter still a hit, Star Wars Destiny right at the tabletop role playing, Arkham Horror Living Card Games, one of the best card games ever, Imperial Assault right now. I feel like that can compete potentially with Legion the most. Oh, here's Legend of the Five Rings card game. I'm not sure what that other Legend of the Five Rings was 
Fallout. Mixed reviews, but a great intellectual property. Twilight Imperium. Rebellion. So each new game that comes out from Fantasy Flight will have a different catalog, or, or there are many different catalogs. Eldritch Horror, one of my absolute favorites ever. Don't know as much about Genesis here, it's cool. Star Wars Armada, some people like that more than X-Wing, from what I understand. Descent 2nd Edition, I would like to play that more. Game of Thrones, the board game. Great game, I hear 2nd Edition's even better and more fast-paced. So what was that, uh... Beginner game. That's interesting because it looks like... Okay, so it's almost like a more entry-level Legend of the Five Rings game, but it's not the card game. Alright, here we have the rule book. Expansion rule books are necessarily usually shorter, which just makes sense. And a lot of times what they end up explaining is... Things that the cards and tiles would just naturally explain to you. But we know we have the expansion icon so you can separate them. You know what's coming from what. We have the fluff here. I don't think I'll read that here because I'm already going to go pretty slowly with... With reading out, showing all of the components. Now, something that's pretty special is agendas. Normally, when someone loses their mind and goes insane, they get a new secret win condition that makes it so that maybe they become evil or crazy and therefore they want to kill everyone or destroy everyone or or maybe they just have to do some crazy thing that they could still win with everyone else a little bit akin to dead of winter game uh games but with this one there is at least one scenario where someone starts with a hidden agenda at the very beginning meaning that they could be something like for example a deep one or a deep one hybrid toward the beginning so hidden traders right from the get-go not everyone is going to like that I like that a lot and again it's not all of the scenarios so it's just like with so many other great aspects of fantasy flight games especially mansions of madness it is an optional situation it's explaining a new puzzle that appears in the app the puzzles in second edition are so fantastic going through the app. Sure, I miss the kinesthetic quality of the first edition, but just how fast you can get into... Um, how fast you can get into it, and how fast you can... you can... you can create it, and... Um, and do the puzzle, and make sure it goes correctly, is wonderful with the app. This app-based system is terrific. It uses an app without abusing it. It's still a board game. It really just does use it for assisting. I look at this because um, Nikki Valen one of my favorite board game designers ever, ever because I think she really understands how to make games fun and focuses on fun and theme and storytelling. Well, she's not with Fantasy Flight Games anymore, and I think this is the first, one of the first ones where she did not work on it. So I'm curious about who the new designer is. I'm sure they did a great job. And I'm sure she left them with a lot of great information to work with. And of course... So that's very awesome to me to look at the... Uh, so it's talking about how the hidden depth scenario we needs three or more players. Because that's the one with the... You know, there are deep ones on board. And I love that, that, that some of us are deep ones right from the get-go. That's fantastic. And it's, of course, talking about the components that come with this. Uh, water being a feature. That's very awesome. It slows down investigators. And aquatic and flying and phasing monsters. Don't forfeit movement. So those are new rules. This rift rules. This wa the water rules. Uh, and, of course, the agendas with, you know, the deep ones in hiding. People who are hybrids are becoming deep ones. So that's awesome stuff to me. All right, all of our major pieces of cardboard are here. Don't be alarmed, I know what I'm doing with this. Ow, ow, ow! Just kidding, just kidding, I'm fine. That would be hilarious, though. Like, like, I'm unboxing, and this guy bleeds to death 
on YouTube, and then it just somehow someone uploads it, perhaps my cat. That wouldn't be funny. That would be tragic. But a little, a little funny. I mean, I can say that because it's me. All right. Ooh, all right, so we've got our water. No, this is yeah, that's water. Ah, whoopsie. Hey, perfect though. Rift on one side, water on the other. I'm pretty sure. I'm guessing scenarios that use a lot of water will have less rift and vice versa. But that's the main new feature, um, as far as things that can appear. So awesome stuff. Love it. Look closely at this rift. I'm not even sure. Oh, I see. Alright, so we're breaking a hole in reality, really. Like a portal, like like a tear in space and time. Very awesome. More clue tokens. No different from before, but it, it makes sense. Maybe you simply have more total going on. This is a new kind of door. Uh... I'm not sure what we have a lot of doors in the main one. I think it's simply just for the stylistic look. Maybe they look more like a ship or a, or a, a boat or an airship or a train. I actually don't think so. I think we just are given additional doors with a, a different look that's not necessarily like that. All right, so this one was overall, we know what's on there. Let's look, I'm not going to look at all of these in detail, but, uh, storage hold, awesome. And, of course, a lot of these things, just because they're all traveling, uh, machines, would have similar room sometimes. Like, a storage hold, one can imagine, could be on a boat, a sea vessel, or potentially on a zeppelin. Same thing with, uh... Nope, freight car. This would only be on a train. And so, of course, I love that there's the train as well. I, to me, those are really fun because different locations are great. And Mansions of Madness has always been about zooming in in, if you will, tactical way, even though it's not supposedly played like a tactical way, but zoomed into the RPG traditional level. Lifeboat, wonderful. And, of course, this could, this could move potentially, I imagine. Um, and... For whatever reason, the boat tiles that were already in the game were some of those fun ones, like in the Escaping Inn's Mouth. I just really like them. Alright, so I think what we'll have is the train ones are going to be more or less exclusively for train. Which is why, you know, obviously the other side would be decisively not train. So, if you're on a train and it uses this, then of course it won't use this, but that makes sense, so... It doesn't feel like they would have to choose with the storytelling. There was, uh, when they first released Forbidden Alchemy, which was an expansion for a first edition, there were some real issues that went on where they, <laughs> they made scenarios that used tiles that required both sides of a single tile, like mistakes like that. And, you know, I don't blame them too much. I mean, they should have looked out for that. But uh, I'm sure that's the kind of thing that they're always... Crew bedroom, I could see that being on many types as well. So the new rooms look great. The art still looks great. The art for both editions for the room tiles has always looked has always looked great to me. Chart room, just like such a fun experience, exploring, finding out, seeing what's around each corner. The second edition certainly has less of the pick up and deliver feel, I think. I mean, it still has it a lot, but uh, um, Draken Strike's component overview of the first edition did point out that the first edition had uh, a fair amount of the Scooby-Doo mentality, meaning that it was just very deliberate and obvious where you needed to go next. Like, you go here, then obviously go there, then obviously go there. I think it's much less obvious now. cabins. I love this. This is great. And also, there's just a fun experience in real life of being on a ship, a train, or a plane. So you get a little bit of that into your imagination. 
with this as well. So we're, I guess it's like a luxury ship would have a spa, I suppose, right? It makes sense. Uh, bridge. Bridge stairs. That's interesting to have that kind of 3D effect because uh, usually what they've done is make it so that the 3D effect is just buttoned by like, oh, here's a separate set of rooms. And here's a separate set of rooms for first floor, second floor, where this is kind of like a half floor up, something like that. Kind of quasi 3D. So I won't go through all of the monsters either, but uh, these tiles, of course, slip into the little monster stands. And I like that. Not everyone likes that. Many people will just choose to just use these, but I actually do like putting these into the monster stands and it is annoying that really to make them not fall apart I do have to glue them into the monster stand uh, the bases but it doesn't really bother me it's one of those things that once it's done it's done there's a few square ones here as well let's see a pool right also quite luxurious and it's funny to think about water bodies of water on a body of water i mean i think that's been done as long as there's been big boats basically fun something about it's always been a little funny even though it makes sense you can't go out swimming outside of the boat it's moving ship deck Ooh, some bloody gross stuff going on there all right I won't show every single one, but you can simply see how cool these uh, these room tiles are. See, this is a lot of ocean, oceanic ones. One thing that I hope they do more is make more random scenarios or more scenarios that use random boards from different other expansions. So, like, if you have another expansion, make it so that... It might randomly use board tiles from some other one. Just find more ways to mix it up so that it's not like, oh, if I don't want to play that expansion, I know I'll never use that room tile. I don't think that's been a huge issue yet, but enough. It's been, there's been more segmentation than in the first edition. But one thing that's beautiful about second edition, one of many things, is the use of NPCs. The app uses them wonderfully without overdoing how you can interact with them, making it so there's just enough interaction possible and just enough fluff associated with them. The Call of the Wild expansion for the first edition had this kind of convoluted NPC talking system where you would draw from like a conversation deck and then sort of choose about where you would go with them and what they would do next. Uh, and it was kind of cool for what it was. It was probably the best way to do it without having an app, but this app just streamlines and cleans up so much. But as you can see, it doesn't get rid of the board game. There's still all of the different cards, all of the room tiles, all of the monsters, and uh, all of the heroes as well. She's quite debonair. She looks, she's like, well there. Hey there, big boy. Why is she talking like that? Is that a, a gun, a knife, or like a cigarette thing? My vision's not great. It's more knifey, I think. And a book of some kind. So if they just have the plain bases, then they are heroes, but the monsters will get stuck into big black bases. So this guy, again, oh, there's even an investigator lodged inside. Gross. Oh, it's this person. I forget who this is or if this person has made an appearance already. Awesome. How wonderfully gross is this? Ah, oh, I love how much you disgust me. Ooh, these hands and the gross thumbs and blah. Ah, oh, it stinks. Like, it literally looks like it smells. I love it. Now, so I wonder if this is another form of Deep One, because we have the straight-up Deep Ones in the base game, and we have the Deep One hybrids in the base game. 
but this definitely seems like another aquatic creature that is humanoid, of course, so I'm wondering which one it is, so I'll have to look into, look into that. Same with this guy. And, uh, this is probably the first expansion for the second edition that has a lot of aquatic stuff, because it's clear that with the base game of the second edition, they had two Innsmouth scenarios, basically, which is, they really went all in on the Deep Ones and Innsmouth and Water Humanoid stuff, which I think is great, because I think that it had been often underserved with other... Oh, I already looked at her, sorry. Uh, with other... Oh, this guy, I like them. This is our... Uh, kind of Aquaman. Our sexy Aquaman guy. Who, by the way, is implied in Eldritch Horror on his character sheet is kind of from Innsmouth and has Innsmouth blood in him and will eventually become a deep one. Spoiler. Listen or read Shadow over Innsmouth. It's wonderful. So this must be an NPC of some kind because he doesn't have the normal hero base. Unless they're just doing an exception. Come on, focus. There we go. So is he a baddie? Yeah, I think he must be a baddie or some kind of very special NBC. And this is our uh, musician jazz player who makes appearances in some of the some of the games. What's cool is that the heroes overlap in the different Arkham games. Ooh, gross. Oh, this attaches, it looks like. So I think some of those questions will be answered by looking at looking at the cards. Yeah, the Deep One stuff hasn't made enough of a huge impact on a lot of the other Arkham games, but I think that's been changing. I think we're seeing more of it. This is that cool, hunky uh, Aquaman guy who, by the way, is probably going to be a Deep One. I think they probably infl imply it here. Mm, Silas Marsh loved the sea ever since he was old enough to toddle through its shiny shallows, but briny shallows. Becoming a sailor was the easiest decision he ever made, and his sturdy frame and good sense for the weather gave him a reputation aboard any vessel. There was only one thing troubling Silas. Over and over again, he dreamed of uh, unsettling cities hidden beneath the waves and inhabited the bizarre, by bizarre creatures. These dreams called to him, stirring something deep within him that he thought he had left behind in his hometown of Innsmouth. Hunky Aquaman has the Innsmouth blood in him. So that's the spoiler I mentioned before, but that is awesome. I want to see if... So I've seen these characters before, and I like them. I like to see them again in new games. I've seen them in, like, Eldritch Horror and Elder Sign, not all in all of those games, but just, you know, they overlap a lot. But let's see if there's anyone entirely new. Nope, there's none. And I think that's kind of cool. I think it's cool to see our... Because we did have, like, uh, some new people already in the second edition, but we have our, our server, waitress, musician, sailor, and spy. I haven't seen enough of Trish yet outside of, what, Elder Sign? So it's cool to see more of the spy. Alright, these are all the bases for the monsters, and again, they're little, they have the plastic uh, miniature goes on, and the tile slides in that says how scary they are, like how how uh, much they are likely to be the one that tries to give you horror, if there's a competition between two or more, a much more streamlined and elegant solution than the first edition. And then finally, there's... Uh, uh, it also tells you, you know, how good they are at blocking you from evading their awareness, it's called, on those tiles, also. So not that many new monsters, not that many new characters, but a, a still a substantial amount of each, and, um, um, a lot of new room tiles, certainly, and new tokens. Alright, so these are the agenda ones. Look at the back of this card, but do not reveal to other investigators. This is the hidden role, hidden identity ones, what you need for the scenario with three or more players. 
six. There's six of them. So that is really cool because this game is up to five people. So if you have to shuffle all of them, it might be like Shadows over Camelot and other games where maybe no one is the deep one or deep one hybrid. And of course, with the way the game works is it tells you what to pick up. So you look through these decks when you are told to to get them. A new type of spell, Mists of Relaya. That's fantastic. The spell system in this and Eldritch Horror with the flipping system is wonderful. Storm of Spirits. That I'm unfamiliar with what it will be like. But Plumb the Void is a spell that's been in some other games. And I like that a lot. Plumb me in the sense of explore and dive into. Oh, a condition. Right, because conditions are much less of a part of this than they are of Eldritch Horror, but even in the core game, there's still a lot of... There's a lot... There's still conditions you can get. This one is the one that I think is polarizing, which is, you know, lost in time, and you remove your person from the board temporarily, and you try to find a way out. Back in, so to speak. And then insane conditions which really are the core thing that make Insanity and Mansions of Madness different, because before, and in, or in all other games, Insanity is just another life meter, basically. I mean, thematically, it's different, but if you lose all your Insanity, you go insane, you're, you're dead, you're out of the board. And that's fine, but it's cool that when you go insane, you're still alive, but something in your agenda, in your goals, and your desires changes. That just is wonderful and fun and secret information and cool, and also just makes a lot more sense. More wound markers that you can take place face up or face down. I forget what other system they borrowed that from. Uh, but it's really cool. Golden Trumpet. That's awesome. Fishing Net. These are unique items I'm looking at. Fuel. Hmm. If it burns, ellipses, dot, dot, dot. Lots of fuel, actually. So there must be at least one scenario where ticket, this ticket, is only one way. Nice. So cool plot items here. Sentinel of the Void. Ah, uh, risky. You might become lost in time and space. Alright, so I'm extremely excited for this. And... Look, I know my unboxing plus commentary videos are nothing special. There's other unboxing videos out there, but I like to do this first-person thing where you can kind of look directly the way I'm looking at these because this just looks fantastic. I mean, even if you don't get this, you just have the base game. It's just such a good game. And, of course, just like any board game, what you put into it is how fun it'll be, how much you get into the mood and atmosphere and get stoked for it. But, uh... I don't know, this might be the most exciting one yet, and they've all been pretty exciting to me. Alright, here I'll give an example of... Dimensional Shambler. Okay, so that aquatic-y thing that I thought maybe was more aquatic might be kind of a dimensional thing rather than a water... a, a water thing. And, and, oh, that guy that I was like, is that a playable person? No, it's the Warlock, so it's, it's an evil wizard, basically. And uh, I always mix up which one is which. I w actually wish they were labeled, but one is how scary the thing is, and the other is how good its awareness is. Basically, how good it is at grabbing at you if you try to escape from it, its chance of doing a damage at you. Which I'm pretty sure must be five, the, the lower number, blue. And the higher number must be how scary it is. Uh, then a special attack is on the bottom. This monster can move through impassable borders and walls. That's really awesome. And this red number in the lower right corner that used to kind of be its health in the first edition but now is in the second edition is not its health anymore. The health is just located in the app. But that is basically how just strong it is. How good it is at bashing down doors and barriers is really what, uh, what that is. So that's it. That's awesome. I'm excited for it. That's the end of it. Thanks very much for checking that out with me, and uh, I hope to play this with all of you 
very, very soon. Man, Mansions of Madness is so great. You've got to... It's not everyone's cup of tea. Some people would rather, you know, just play viddy culture and, uh, you know, throw sand in their boots and roll around in garbage. Or I don't know why am I saying all that. Viddy culture is fine. All right, Michael Eldridge saying thanks. Uh, if, you, if you want to do thumbs up, that seems to be validating for me. And if, if you just hate me as a person, do thumbs down. I, d I deserve that too. But either way, just do something with your thumbs, because otherwise it's like wasting them. I'll see you next time.